Hey guys, thanks for tuning in today. I'm really excited to be showing you this watch here. It's one that's um, I've won it ever since I saw pictures of it back in 2014. It's You could call it one of my grail watches. It's a Japanese domestic market Seiko from their Brights line. And uh, it's kind of got the nickname the Grand Cocktail, referring to its beautiful sunburst cocktail dial and its Grand Seiko-esque uh, quality and, and attributes. So I'm really excited. I've been looking forward to this watch for quite some time. And uh, I, uh, <laughs> I I know I, I, I talk favorably about all the watches that I've put on my channel. Um, and this is going to be no exception. This is really one of the nicest watches that I've handled in, in a while. Um, they, you know, they are from my personal collection, so I am a little partial to them, but I'll I'll try my best to be objective and talk about the things I like about it and any drawbacks uh, in case any of you are considering per picking one up or purchasing one. Um, it's really, really nice. Uh, just to let you know a little bit about my tastes, I, uh, I'm a big watch lover. I used to be a Swiss snob. I've owned all types of qualities from the Rolex Ceramic Submariner, Omega Seamaster to Japanese domestic market Seikos, boutique brands, micro brands, almost everything in between. I'm, I'm just a, an everyday guy and I love watches and uh, it's just kind of one of my uh, hobbies and passions. So um, I'm really excited about this one. Let me tell you about it. So it's got a 40.5 millimeter case. Um, it's very classic, it's very uh, elegant. Uh, you can see the fine lines, the really nice finishing, how it just catches light and reflects it. And oh, it's really, it's difficult to describe, or it's, it's difficult to see the, the beauty of it through a video or through photos. If you see this in real life, it really just pops. It really has just a special factor to it that, that's uh, tangible, it's noticeable. Kind of like a diamond it just uh invokes it's just very beautiful so uh, it's got nice finishing brush satin polish good lines everything's clean well machined well put together well designed for sure let me show you the dial here let me get closer so it at first glance it just kind of looks like a black gloss dial but you get it in a certain light and that three-dimensional sunburst pattern, that wave just comes forward and it really catches light. Um, and it looks, looks very elegant. Um, I think it's the same material that is in the Saab 33. It's a nice, deep, glossy black that almost looks brown and hard sunlight. I found that to, to be the case with this one as well. Take a look at those applied indices. They're really long. They're really well finished. Um, they're chamfered and beveled in areas. And then you can't see it on the video, but I took a loop to this and there's very fine linear machining indentations running the length of each indice. And so there's just so many little tiny facets to catch light and to reflect that it the, the the indices they're really just pieces of art you can see the date windows uh, framed in stainless steel you've got classic beveled sword hands that are polished and a nice um, second hand that reaches to the very end of each of the little micro marks on the chapter ring i think everything about this watch was just really well thought out, really well planned and executed. So I, I love the timeless, clean design. It's just, oh man, it's really, really nice. You, you gotta see it in person to appreciate. Taking a look at the crown, there's an onyx, polished onyx that's inset in the crown. Winding is very smooth. Um, let's look at the bracelet here. You can see it's a, um, five section design with a little bit of flex here. You've got brush, high polish, brush, high polish, brush, 
in the center three sections are slightly raised and they're not chamfered they're more of a a bevel but uh, they really also take light really well the side the sides are of course a high polish and it's very flexible it's very comfortable it's really easy to size too it's a pin and collar system it took me like three minutes to size um, the clasp it's nice forged um, there's no micro adjustments but uh, they do come with two half links so you shouldn't have any problems in getting a good um, customized fit for your wrist here's the case back it's exhibition um, so the 6R15 C movement it's a 23 joule in-house low beat movement this I've owned several before in the Sarb the Sumo the Shogun this has been my most accurate 6R15 it's it's running about five seconds a day slow so that's you know that's chronometer grade so I'm really happy I don't know if they regulated it or I just got lucky out of the box but um, but I'm very pleased with uh, this particular movement. Um, it's got Seiko's proprietary dia shield or dia shield. I'm not exactly sure how to say it. You can laugh at me if you want to. Um, but it's got a really nice clear coating that makes it scratch resistant. And um, you know I've worn this for a couple weeks now, and I haven't put a mark on it. And I. You know, I desk dive. I, I have a nine to five job in an office. I, I have a two year old that I play with. Um, you know, I wear my watches all the time. I uh, shower with them. I exercise with them. You name it. And so this is the the coating's been really really well done. Let me give you a wrist shot. So let me talk a little bit about. Um, a lot of people compare this as just a nicer Sarb, Sarb 33. I have owned both watches. I don't have the Sarb with me right now or I'd give you a side-by-side, -side, but uh, I, I did sell it because of a few things that I wasn't extremely happy about. The bracelet and the hands and NC, et cetera, if you've watched the video. But uh, this one, it's hard to compare the two because they're very different watches. The, the brights, the grand cocktail, it, oh, excuse me, it wears like, it wears like a, the size that it is, the 40.5. It almost wears a little larger because of how much dial is present and how long those rectangular indices are. This, to me, wears more like a 41, almost 42 millimeter watch. And the Saab definitely wore like at the 38 that it was, so they're hard, they're hard to compare. This one feels like a complete watch. The case matches the bracelet, everything, you know, how it's, the case reflects light, the dial reflects light, the indices do, the, the bracelet does. It's just a dazzling piece that I think meshes really well. The Sarb was, gosh, it was a great watch, and, and I'd own one again if I found a good deal, but um, it's it's a diff they're very different pieces so they're hard to compare is this worth almost double the price that's totally subjective but I can tell you from my experience I'm extremely happy that I purchased this um, I think I got an amazing deal if this was a six hundred dollar watch or a seven hundred dollar watch it would still be worth every single penny and you would feel like you're getting your money's worth this to me feels you know with my experience with Rolex Omega Raymond Weil all the vast, you know, all the different watches I've owned over the years, this feels like a more than a thousand, maybe a one to two thousand dollar watch. It really is quality and you can feel it. And every time you, at least for me, okay, I'm trying to be impartial, but at least for me, every time I look at it, I put it on my wrist, it puts a smile on my face. This is a beauty. And uh, there's very few negative things I could say about it. Um, if I had to nitpick, kind of subjective, but uh, I wish it were a little smaller, like maybe a 39 or a 40 millimeter size. Um, but that being said, you know, I I don't mind really the how it wears. It's uh, you know, again, that's more of a personal preference. Um, some people don't like the printing automatic there on the dial. Um, I think it looks better than what they use, the automatic 23 jewels that 
they've printed on most of their Sarb line and the kind of semi-cursive cutesy print. I think this is more timeless, more modern looking. I don't know. I, I, I kind of like it, but uh, that could be a, a con depending on what boat you're in, what party you're in. Um, if you opt for the more popular version, which is the cream dial, the cream dial is beautiful as well. But uh, I think that the black onyx stone looks a little funny with the cream dial. It doesn't quite mesh in my opinion. So I'd want a signed crown if I had the cream dial. But with the black, I don't mind this. I think it plays very well. It has some nice asymmetry to it. Um, if I were to really nitpick, it might be nice to eliminate the micro markings on the chapter ring. Maybe regulate the movement or put a, a, an upgraded movement like an Adel 35 movement. But uh, again, if you're doing that, all you really have to do is put a GS on the bottom of the dial and it becomes a Grand Seiko. It's really a beautifully done, well-executed timepiece. So, so really, I don't have any major negative things to say about this. It's kind of subjective. I do wholeheartedly recommend picking one up if you... If you like uh, this kind of thing, just a just a beautiful classic dress, almost sport watch. It's it's really nice. Um, if you're on the fence, if you think it's just a glorified Sarb, my experience is they're very different watches. So um, I, I I wouldn't directly compare the two. This to me compares more to a a Grand Seiko. I think this is more of a baby Grand Seiko than the Sarb is, although I did love both of the watches. So anyways, I've, I've kind of uh, rambled on quite a bit. Um, I know this is a... Uh, I've done a lot of Seiko reviews. My next video I'll probably do um, probably an Oris. I've been looking at the Aquis. I'll, I'll do something else for you guys. Um, but yeah, just super happy with this. Super excited. Um, wholeheartedly recommend it and I really really enjoy wearing this the only reason I can think of ever taking this out of my collection is is, is if I actually get a Grand Seiko watch I haven't got one yet it is on the bucket list um, but even then I think this is a generational quality where if you keep it you know right if you keep it a uh, regular maintained every five or so years you check your gaskets, um, you do all the work that you need to do to uh, preserve a watch. I think this is a generational hand-me-down piece that you could give to your posterity. It really is that timeless and beautiful, and I really think the quality is there. So uh, those are my thoughts. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, like, um, subscribe, comment. I'm happy to return uh, comments. I, uh, I, I'm just like you guys. I'm a regular guy that just loves watches, so... Love to talk about them. Okay, until next time. Thanks, guys.